Welcome to an early morning episode of If you train your sprint for 30 days, will you get faster? And if so, how much faster? What? What? I can't believe that just happened. As a self-proclaimed serious cyclist, there are two numbers I spend way too much time thinking about, my FTP and max power. Look, I try to be like my wife and not care about it, but I do. Did I get faster? Well, first you have to know where I got started. A little over a year ago, my max sprint was like 800 watts. In fact, before hiring a cycling coach, one second, let me get this. My all-time best five-second power was 765 watts. For context, World Tour pros will regularly hit like 1400 plus watts in the sprint at the end of a five hour long race. But after a couple months of training, I finally broke the 1000 watt barrier. It was a big moment for me. Over the summer, my sprint continued to grow until this happened. As you can tell, I was thrilled. I was over the moon. I could hit 1200 watts. Now, I couldn't hit it for more than like a split second. My five second power was like 1,099 watts, so it dropped off pretty quickly. But still, it's pretty respectable power. And I honestly thought that was my max, because you're kind of told you can't train your sprint power. You either have it or you don't, genetically. But that's not entirely true, because over the last 30 days, I've learned you can train your sprint. Oh, I really need to wash my bike. But before I get into the specific training I did, we should talk about nutrition and supplements. And I'm not a coach. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a scientist, I'm just a guy on YouTube who likes riding his bike as fast as he possibly can. The only thing I'm qualified to talk about are my own experiences, so results may vary. Start with my diet. It's trash. It's definitely an area I can and I should optimize, uh, and I will, I will, in the near future. I'm just not ready to give up my irresponsible love of pizza yet. I fuel my rides with whatever sugar I can find, usually gummy bears or straight up sugar, Jesse Coyle style. I try to take in 40 to 60 grams of carbs per hour while I'm training. And with that out of the way, I've been taking two controversial supplements, creatine and ketones. Put them there in the background so you can kind of like see them as I talk. I've noticed creatine's been under fire lately in the cycling community, mostly because you tend to gain some water weight when you take it. And with cycling, we all know gaining weight is a big no, no. After all, watts per kilogram is the goat of metrics. But I stumbled on this video by Adam Agusia a few months ago, and it made me decide to give creatine a shot. And if it would help you in whatever you do in life to be about 10% stronger, well then you might consider taking three to five grams of creatine every day. Now it's been a few months. I did gain a little weight. I've gone from a stable 77 kilos to a new baseline around 79. <gasps> In addition to that extra water weight, honestly, I probably have another four or five kilos I could stand to lose by cutting out pizza. So I'm not too worried about the creatine gain, especially if it'll help improve my strength by 10%. In fact, let's do some quick math. A 1000 watt sprint at 80 kilos is 12.5 watts per kilogram. A 10% increase will give you a 1100 watt sprint. Gaining an extra two kgs puts you at 82 kilograms and a watts per kilo of 13.4. Now we are just talking about sprinting. Creatine is good for those high-end efforts, the stuff that's on the left end of your power profile. It's not necessarily gonna lift all of your power. But what if I told you there was a supplement that could increase all your power? Not by 10%, by 15%. And it won't make you gain any extra weight. You may have seen some videos about this stuff. Francis Cade made a great video where he interviewed a real nutritionist Ellen McDermott, and she referenced a study where participants used exogenous ketones to increase their body's natural production of EPO. I'll link Francis's video and the study below because it's fascinating. And I'm not Dylan Johnson. I don't normally read exercise studies for fun. Dude. But this one captivated me. Participants were able to produce 15% more power after just three weeks. That was on a 30 minute time trial. So we're talking about the middle of your power curve here. For you FTP junkies out there, this is for you. And this stuff is UCI legal. Needless to say, I was very excited to see if anything happened to my sprint while taking these ketones. There is a catch. It's not cheap. Each of these bottles is $5 USD. You can save some money if you set up a subscription. I think it's like $4.50. HVNM is sponsoring this video and they sent me a bunch of bottles. So I haven't felt the sting of the price yet, 
but I have seen the results. Later in the video, I'll show you how I take this stuff because the protocol does matter. And because of the price, you definitely don't want to waste it. I'm getting ready to head out on one last sprint before I release this video. This is what my training has looked like for the last 30 days. The first two weeks were almost identical. Started the week off with the 20 second power sprints where you start in a high gear at a low speed. At the beginning of the sprint, it's really hard. You have to push just to get going. By the end of the 20 seconds, you're spinning out if you're strong enough. <laughs> I was just holding on to dear life at that point. The rest of the week was zone two base training ride, some low cadence hill repeats, and a long endurance ride. Week two added a threshold ride. Now, I have to confess something. I'm not only training my sprint. Sorry. I'm preparing for a trip right now where I ride up the steepest streets in Hawaii, Australia, and New Zealand. And for those rides, I need more than just a sprint. I need a solid five minute power. And what a coincidence. There's some research that suggests doing multiple sets of short sprints with a short recovery can boost your short power profile up to five minutes. I didn't know that, but my coach did. He's the one that built this whole plan. I am working on a long-term video about my experience working with a cycling coach. It's been about a year. Make sure you stick around for that one in about a month or so. Week three followed a similar pattern. Started the week with a sprint session, but this time shorter five second sprints. A base training ride, a threshold ride, and then something new. Two hours of endurance with 12 sprints at the end. And finally, a nice long endurance ride to cap off the week. Week four started the same way, sprint session, base ride, but then you'll notice a little bit of a change. This is one of the advantages of having a coach. My fatigue was creeping up on me and we didn't want to compromise the quality of training. So things were switched up just a little bit and my training load was reduced. I still had a two hour endurance ride with 12 sprints at the end though. Last week, week five, we slowly ramped things up again. Put a sprint session in the middle of the week and a long three hour endurance ride with 12 sprints at the end. And I know this makes me a baby, but I had to do that entire thing indoors. It's been such a hard winter in LA. It's like rained five times, maybe six. That brings us to today, Monday. You'll be watching this on a Tuesday or some other day in the future, but for me it's Monday and I have one more sprint session to do. I'm hoping to hit an all new max power, assuming that it doesn't rain. It's raining. <laughs> but before that ride, I want to show you the results so far because I am very happy with them. The metric I'm focusing on is five second power. In January, my all time peak five second power was 10,088, 10,000, I keep saying that. Five second power was 1,088 watts. As a reminder, when I started training December, 2021, like a year prior, my max sprint was 800 watts. My five second sprint was like 700 watts. So obviously a year of training had already done a lot of work. That's like a 55% increase in five second power, but that's just a one-time peak. It doesn't tell the full story. Let's take a look at this sprint session before this latest training block. In this session, I did 10 sprints. Let's zoom in and look at the peak for each of these sprints. 900 watts, 1000 watts, sometimes only 800. This was not an endurance session, just a warm up and sprint. So there's no real fatigue. All I could replicate at that point was like 800, 900 watts. And that's peak power. That's not five second power, not 10 second power. So what does my sprint look like after training? It looks like this. In this session, I rode at a chill endurance pace for two hours, and then I did 12 sprints. Let's look at the first four here. Zoom in, peak of the first one, 1137, second one, 1208, 1252, 1198, next group, 1221, 1260, 1227, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, What? What? Less than a year ago, I couldn't hit a thousand watts. Dude, training works. <laughs> that, as of this moment right now, is my current peak power, which is tantalizingly close to 1300 watts. So today on my ride, that's the barrier I'm gonna to try to break. But what about my five second power? Here's my power profile before training. Here's my power profile last month. And this is my power profile now. Look at that difference in five second power. I went from 1,099 watts up to 1,228 watts. Was it the training, the ketones, the creatine? Well, it definitely was the training <laughs> and the supplements. How much of it was creatine and ketones? I don't know. I didn't isolate the variables, but I did promise you I'd share my protocol 
for using ketones. It's very simple. For endurance rides, I add ketone IQ into my bottle in addition to carbs. Doesn't replace carbs, provides an additional fuel source for your body. Where are my gloves? If I'm doing a high intensity session, then I put them in my recovery drink after the ride, but not before. We'll talk more about that in another video because right now I've got a ride to do. This might not be a good day for this test. Not even close. Maybe later this year. Thanks for watching.